Welcome back once again, everybody. It's Dean here from iProgress, and today I'm going to be giving you my top five tips for your first day at university as a new PhD student. So before we jump into the video, make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and in the comment section down below, let me know your first day at university stories. Were they amazing? Were they troublesome? Do you have any funny tales to tell the community? Now, our first tip, and I this applies obviously mostly to students who are going to a new university to undertake the PhD, but also can be applied to returning students. My first tip is to make sure that you undergo all of those orienteering processes. Make sure to be accessing your emails, see where you need to be, what opportunities have been present for you. Is there any online training that you need to take part in? Is there a designated place that you need to go to get your new ID card to check in, to really sign those forms? And that's really important because too often it is going to be quite overwhelming. And packing yourself with as much information as possible will be really beneficial for any student, especially if you're new at that institution. Universities are moving a lot more now to these online orienteering packages where they show you virtual tours of the university. They give you hints and tips on how to access those virtual learning environments. And I think that's really beneficial because it allows you to do it in your own time. And it also means that in most cases, you can even do that before your first day on campus. Obviously, you're not starting yet, so it's perfectly fine to leave it until that first week. But I've spoken to students who's done this before. If they do do it before they get to campus, they feel like they've hit the ground running. They feel like they're more ready to jump into their PhD program of study. So just bear that in mind. The second tip I can afford you is to be arranging that first meeting with your director of studies and the supervision team. Now, this might not happen on day one, but if you can do that background work and get it for the morning that your PhD starts, that will really give you that pat on the back and say, look, you're here, you've arrived, you're ready to start this PhD journey. And that can be really beneficial. It means that you can normalize having these meetings with your supervisors. You can almost put lots of these anxieties of starting to rest. You can get the best advice from them. They might have update information. And most importantly, you can start working with them to understand how your supervisory relationship will best be placed. Now, I'm going to do a video on ideal supervisor relationships in a couple of weeks, so watch out for that. But in the meantime, you really want to be setting the scene yourself. You want to be laying your cards on the table and saying, look, this is how I like to be supervised. This is how I want us to try from the off. And it might change. It definitely will. It did in my experience. I really enjoyed being kind of almost micromanaged right at the start because I didn't really know how to do a PhD. You know, I didn't have that background knowledge that you're picking up from these videos. But as my journey progressed, I like to be let off the leash quite a lot. I like to free roam and try and do my best to develop ideas. And I would trial and error. I would fail and I would also succeed. And then I'd take that information back to my supervisors and disseminate it back to them and say, look, this is my journey thus far in the last month. What can you advise? And have you got any preference about where we take this project next? If nothing else, it'll be a really nice meet and greet. You can grab a coffee and then you can get to work. My third piece of advice is to refill that coffee pot that we talked about in tip number two and take yourself on a really mindful walk around campus. Explore the areas that you've never been before if you're a returning student, but just get yourself lost if you are a new student. Find your ways in and out of the buildings, understand the different blocks, understand the different floors, and really immerse yourself in that university culture. Okay, one of the points that I've taken on board from my previous PhD students is that when they have come to a new university, and this also applies to master's students, when you've come to a university that's new from a previous institution, it's quite difficult sometimes to acclimatize yourself to that new institution, that new university. And by getting this out of the way very early on, okay, by really finding yourself and immersing yourself in that journey, you can feel closer to that community. If you do that, you're going to feel more confident about really getting yourself out there and making a name for yourself in your academic studies. You might even find yourself a home away from home when your PhD gets a little bit rocky and you just want to hide away. For my fourth tip for what you should do on your first day at university as a PhD student, 
whilst you're on that mindful walk, make sure to drop in and see the technicians and also the library staff and also the reception. Okay, make sure that you get to know these individuals. These people are going to be helping to support you in your studies for the next three to four years. And it's really important that you have a great relationship with them. I know from my time at university, I've many a time had to call on people from the admin team, the finance team, the librarians, the student well-being team to support me throughout my journey. And already having a point of contact in mind means that when I do need to contact these individuals, I'm not just sending off a blank email. I can really address them in person. I can go down and see them and I can really facilitate getting back on my feet and progressing with my PhD journey. As an aside, that's also a tip that can apply to any academics. The amount of people I've spoken to who don't know who the techs are, who don't know who the librarians are, is actually astounding. These connections are really vital. So go ahead and get a kickstart on them. And then my fifth tip is when you're exploring this virtual learning platform is to also check your emails to make sure that you have all the information necessary about the workshops that are going to be taking place in the upcoming months and sign up to them all if they're applicable to your studies. Your PhD is not only a journey about you developing expertise, but it's also about you developing as a researcher. Oftentimes we don't know that we need a skill until we come to use it. So being able to sign up to these programs, oftentimes these are going to be mandatory as well for your course. So just bear that in mind when you're randomly deleting emails from your account. Sign up to them, take part in them and really do contribute something to those sessions. Don't just sit at the back working on your dissertations. You can also use this as an opportunity to start networking and starting to get to know your cohort. As I've mentioned in previous videos, it's really important that you have this supportive ecosystem throughout your PhD journey. And by being able to identify these networks through these workshops, that's a really good starting point for you. So to summarize, make sure you're taking part in all of those orienteering sessions, checking out on the virtual learning platform, organize a meeting with your supervision team so you can feel like you're hitting the ground running. Take yourself for a mindful walk and a tour around campus. Get to know the facilities, get to know the place that you're going to be spending the next three to four years of your life. Saying hi to the techs, all of the admin staff and the librarians who are going to be supporting you on your journey. And finally, signing up to all of the workshops necessary for you to really succeed and develop your progress as a researcher and an academic. I've been Dean for my progress. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and let me know in the comments down below what your experience were of your first day at university. Did you hit the ground running or were there stumbling blocks? I'd love to know. Until next time, good luck on your PhD journey, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next video.